Hi, I'm Ben Metteleport, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through our Getting Started Guide for Linux. If you've landed on this page, we're already on this Linux server page, but there's a few prerequisites that you'll need. You'll need a virtual machine, access to DNS. If you don't have those currently available to you, you can also get started with our browser labs, which are interactive free labs that you can try. That sets up the virtual machine and DNS for you. We also have a Docker example, and we also have an example of running Teleport locally in Kubernetes. But for this, we're going to use a Linux example here. So let me dive in and get started. So to get started here, we're going to install Teleport 10.0.2 uh, on a Linux machine. Once this is running, we're going to set up the auth service, a proxy service, an application service, and an SSH service. Before we sort of go too deep, I think it's kind of helpful to have a diagram. What we do is we're going to be using um, AWS EC2. We're going to create a new host. And this host will have act effectively as a bastion. For this setup, we're only worried about a single host. And this will be the proxy and the backend services. Everything will also be on disk. We have options for DynamoDB. We're going to use our inbuilt Let's Encrypt set up, this is going to get our certificate. And when we change our DNS records, we're going to pick a subdomain, which is going to be teleport 10 dot our uh, URL, and then we're going to do a wildcard one, which I'll kind of show you why we do that, because we're going to set up this Python app. Another thing that you need to be aware of is we're going to open port 443 and also port 22 to do the configuration and setup. And teleport, you know, it's, this tutorial will just go through uh, server access and apps, but there's a range of other protocols we support. We support a range of databases, Kubernetes clusters, and also Windows desktops. Okay, let's uh, dive straight back in. So I think we've gone through these prerequisites. Another thing that you'll need will be a two-factor authenticator app. I'm going to be using Google Authenticator on my phone. And then we need the registered domain name and uh, DNS uh, name servers to configure it. Like I said earlier, if you only have your local machine, follow our Docker Compose guide. So first up, we're going to configure DNS. To get started, actually, before I configure DNS, I'm going to just fire up a new machine because I need to know the IP address of the host that I need. And teleport 10 uh, Linux. So I'm just going to give it a name. I'm just going to be picking a, a AWS Linux host. I'll just pick a micro, which is one of the smaller hosts. I am going to select a key pair just for the configuration. And then I'm going to create a new security group. I'm going to allow SSH traffic from my IP address. And I'm going to allow HTTPS um, traffic from the internet. And this is available from everywhere. Um, you know, you, if you really wanted to limit it, you could also set that to your home IP, but then you can't get other people added to the cluster. So I'm making it available to everybody. Another thing that I'm going to do here is under advanced options, I'm going to also turn on uh, metadata accessible and allow tags in metadata. In Teleport 10, we have the ability to pull in tags automatically from your instances without having to run any other scripts. So that's a very helpful feature. And I just want to double check which VPC is. You can probably likely do this in your default VPC, uh, but I have a few here. So let me just change it to uh, this VPC. I'm going to enable a public IP. And let's launch this instance. So this instance is going to launch now. Uh, so it takes a little while to uh, provision. But now we have the public IP address. So we're going to take this and then, like I said, set up our DNS. So the first thing we need to do is set up an A record. I'm using Google Domains. You know, you might have Route 53 if you're all in um, Amazon, but I'm just going to manually create these records to sort of show you. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to create a new record and I'm going to call this teleport 10 Linux. It's a record and I'm going to create a new record which is going to be star.teleport 10 Linux. That's an A record and it's exactly the same IP address. Okay, so that can take a little while to propagate, although Google Domains is pretty quick. Okay, so next up, we need to run the simple web service. I need to, oh, our instance is running, so let's connect to it. Okay, so you can see I am in my host, which is to run a quick update. Uh, demo hyphen app. And then we're just going to copy and paste this. So it's going to just create a index HTML, a very simple HTML page. So you can see in demo app, we have that page. And then next up, we're going to run a simple HTTP service with Python 3 on port 9000. And so since port 9000, we didn't open that to our host. There's no way to access it. So then we're going to use teleport application access to access this app host, let that be running. And so next up, we're going to set up teleport on the host. We're using AWS Linux. Um, we have options here for both our dev repo, RPM, if you want to download our toggle, and we have ARM instances, and you can even run teleport on a Raspberry Pi. And then we have our legacy repo here. So I'm just going to configure with the yum repo at the instance. We're going to install it, say yes. Going to accept our GPG key. OK, so now if we go which teleport, you can see teleport has been installed. Teleport version 10.0.2. OK, so the next up, we're going to configure teleport. So we're going to use the teleport configure command, which helps configure this for you. We have two options here. If you have a private network deployment, you need to obtain a valid certificate keychain. But since we are on a public internet, we can use Let's Encrypt. And so first thing we need to do is set our domain, which if we recall correctly was Teleport 10 Linux. And then we need to set our email. Email is used because uh, you need to register your email with Let's Encrypt. And then last up, we're going to just run the configure. Okay, so you see actually here, we have run into a permission denied error. And so I'm just going to run that again with sudo. And so this is sort of an interesting um, problem that you might run into. It says teleport hasn't been found. And so the uh, e easiest solution for this is when you're running sudo, just pick the absolute path of the teleport instance. And now if I do cat etc teleport.yaml, this is our um, sample configuration file. In this video, I'm not going to go over a huge amount of detail, but we are going to modify this later. But we have our uh, top part of teleport, which is sort of explains our logging standard, where the data is, our authentication service, some of the listening ports. We're in this proxy listener mode, which is multiplex. We have our SSH service and our proxy service listening on 443. And then we have ACNE enabled, which we just put in our email address. So this has all been kind of configured correctly. Just double check the URL. Yep, this should be the right URL. OK, so since we're in here, let's edit this and add in our local app service. 
So I'm going to come down here to the end, enable the app service, and you can optionally set the public adder, but we're going to just pick the name of our demo app called demo, and it's listening on localhost 9000, which is where we set up that Python app earlier. So we're going to save that. And on um, we're going to start it using systemd. Since we used the RPM package, you already get the systemd unit installed. So we use um, system cuddle start teleport. OK, and now it should be running. Um, system cuddle is a useful tool. So if we go to status, it looks like it's running. Everything looks pretty good. So let's hit this URL. For this first one, you may find that you get like a pre-cache because the first request will get the certificate. So I'm actually going to open a new incognito window. OK, and then we're good. So the instance is running. We can see we have teleport. But we have a login screen here. And so we need to now configure the login. So to configure login, let me actually just open this in this browser window. We need to create the user. And so you can see that we've met with the same screen. To create the user, we're going to use uh, tcuddle, which is an administrative tool for not only adding users, but getting and setting configurations. And there's a range of options. I'll actually show you um, what you can do. So clear. So if I go tcuddle help, you can see a range of things you can do. So you can like add users, add tokens, rotate. You can list requests as part of access requests, list added uh, Kubernetes servers and databases, which can be very helpful for debugging and then sort of ping inventory. So which tcuddle? This one. So we are going to run this command. OK, so now we have added this user. I'm on Linux, so it doesn't always like me to create it. So we're going to get started and create our first user. So the user is called Teleport Admin. Going to create a password. And then I'm using my Authenticator app on my phone. So I'm just pulling that up. I'm going to scan the QR code and let me resize this a bit. Add in my code. And then we have successfully configured it. So, okay, so now we have Teleport up and running. You see that there's a one host here. This is because this is actually the host we've installed Teleport on. So if I come in here, if I do is uh, to teleport.yaml. The reason for this being enabled is that we have the SSH service enabled. And you can see that we pulled in one of our tags, which is picked in the AWS name because we turned on the metadata information. As a side note, you know, this feature sort of works out of the box. If you add uh, more tags, you need to restart it unless you're using the Nitro um, option. Um, and we have more information in our documentation on automatically getting tags. There's another important thing here in our documentation around OS user mapping. You can think of these as you have to specify which local Linux users, so add user slash login. For example, I can't log into this host with Ubuntu, but I can with the EC2 user. We have added the ability in Teleport 10 to have host user creation, and it will automatically create the hosts. We have um, more information under our server area. But I'm going to keep on going and um, go to the next stage. So next stage is login with TSH. TSH is our client tool. So this will be something that you use on your host machine as opposed to the server. Or this is a rollout to your team. Everyone will just interact with Teleport using TSH. We have a range of options that you can use, you know, Mac, we have Brew, we have options for PowerShell. And 
I am on Linux. Um, so if I open another window, this is on my Pop! OS, which is a uh, Linux distro. The one thing I need to change here is just the proxy, which I have here. And then I add in my password and my OTP token. And then you can see actually I have a couple of services, here, but this is the one that I've logged into. And one of the um, features of Teleport, you know, in the background, we have a certificate authority. And when you log in, you get issued a short lived certificate. So I now have a certificate that's valid for 12 hours. This is also customizable. And after those 12 hours, I'll have to um, re-authenticate again, in again. These are my roles. These are some built-in roles that we have available to you. These are some logins. We have, uh, you know, Kubernetes enabled, but I haven't configured Kubernetes yet. So if I do TSH LS, I'll get this one instance. And then if I do TSH SSH, SSH EC2 user at the name of this host name or node name. It will log me in. And so you can see I'm on the same host again. I don't actually don't have hyped up on um, AWS Linux. But let's see what I was doing earlier. Do cat EC2 teleport.yaml. You can see we have this configuration file. Okay, so now we've logged in. Let's sort of keep going to access resources. So we now have Teleport set up, we can log in. Let's fish the demo site that we set up. So the demo site is an application. Here's the URL. It just picks in the name of what we selected. We hit launch, see if it loads. Okay, so you can see this is the original Python app that we were running on port 9000. And Teleport has now sort of forwarded and provided access. And the only way in which we can access this application is using Teleport. And so this is sort of one example, you could, might be using this for accessing, let's say a Grafana instance or internal Jenkins or an internal dashboard that you have. And you just want to provide very limited access to a group of people. Talking to groups of people, we recommend then adding an auth connector in our community edition. We provide GitHub SSO, um, which is a great addition to sort of integrate a whole team into your Teleport cluster. If you need Okta or Active Directory, uh, that's in our enterprise edition, um, like reach out to us if you are interested. So we have accessed our node. So coming up here, so the next step is now we have our cluster running, it's sort of Pick your own adventure. You can either add um, more applications, uh, databases, Kubernetes clusters, servers, Windows desktops, or service accounts via machine ID. And then we have more information here about managing users, uh, setting up single sign-on, recording SSH sessions. So if I come back to my cluster, you see that we have a full audit log and session recording, which it's sort of a live sort of playback and it's not a video. It's a, um, you can actually like copy and paste it and see exactly what happens. So this is a very powerful auditing feature. And we actually have those people using it as a journal as well. And then we have more information about, um, labeling resources, recording sessions. So this sort of brings me to the end of getting started on a Linux server with teleport. If you have any questions or comments, please join us in our community Slack channel. It's here um, and we're more than happy to help you answer your questions. Thanks for watching.